My wife Michelle and I have uh, four kids. Uh, they range in age from 14 to 21. I've been a pilot for 27 years for the United States Coast Guard. I've flown uh, helicopters and a big portion of what we do is search and rescue. Hawaii is just an amazing place for anyone who loves the outdoors. And so for me, water particularly is a love. And being in the water and underwater and riding on the water um, has just always been a draw for me. It was an incredible start to a day. I was able to take some friends from North Carolina surfing. And as I was paddling onto the wave, I could just feel my heart just take off. Just I felt this rapid heartbeat. And I got up surfed the wave, came off the wave, and then I turned back around. I looked, I said, do I go back out for another one? And I thought, no, nah, I'm pretty tired. I'm having a hard time catching my breath. Uh, I'll just ride the next one in. He went in and I was still out and I came in and that's kind of when he seemed a little bit off. I teased him a little bit, checking for his pulse and couldn't find anything. So I just told him he was dead. We both kind of laughed it off as maybe I just don't have a pulse. It was much more of a joke at the time that we did not realize was gonna be taken so seriously so quickly. That night, I really started having some problems. So in the middle of the night, I was, had the air conditioner running, which I don't normally use. I was sweating through the night. I got up to go to the bathroom and, and really uh, started to gray out. So everything just kind of tunneled in. And at that point, I didn't know what was wrong, but I knew something was wrong. The next morning, me and my friend were getting up early to go back out and hit the water again. And I kind of bump into him in the hall and just, he almost looked very flu-like. He was very gray, just looked very groggy. But I told him to go see his doc at base, just stop in and make sure he's all good before he goes. Uh, first looking at him indicated that whatever problem he was suffering from at that moment was not going to be sorted out in our clinic. An ambulance was needed and so was an emergency room. When we had our first read on the ECG, uh, it was of a rhythm that could result in death within seconds, uh, is unlikely to support life longer than hours. Very, very thankful that they did send me to Polymomi. I mean, Polymomi uh, is the heart specialist on the island. Doc Heiderscheid knew that. He also knew time was of an essence and it was the quickest way I could get help. When someone comes in with this kind of presentation, the vast majority of people don't make it to the hospital. They die. The people who do make it to the hospital are usually in severe distress or unconscious. So to have you know someone just sitting there talking to you, I think threw a lot of people off. So I mean, it's like this can't be what it looks like. I remember saying to the doctor when he asked, he said, "Hey, we're going to have to shock you," and that was when I said okay, this is when it gets serious, right? And he goes, yes, this is when it gets serious. So we shocked him once and it didn't work. And then we shock again the second time, it didn't work. And then the third time we shock again and still didn't work, heart rate still 190s. And so he said, stop, let me just FaceTime my wife. And what was going through my mind at that point was I didn't want to die and have her first phone call be, your husband's dead. Cause she, you just couldn't register her. In my 18 years career of being a nurse, I never shock any patient five times. And so when we brought him to the cath lab and did the angiogram and found that he unfortunately did have severe coronary disease, which we were able to treat with uh, several stents and was able to you know, reestablish blood flow and get him uh, pain-free. When the doctor came in the next morning, I, I, I kind of nonchalantly asked him, you know, how long does a heart last when it's in, a, in a extreme tachycardia? And he looked at me and he says, one to two hours. And it had been 14 hours. And so I think that's why he looked at me. So with sort of a little bit crazy eyes, like we're not sure why you were awake, uh, much less alive when you came in. One of the amazing things about this was how well he's done. And I think that speaks a lot to his great physical condition before, as well as a you know, really strong will to survive. At this point in time, it's been eight months. My heart is actually 100% efficient. It's just like a normal heart. Um, I'm back to being in the water. I'm back to surfing. I'm back to volunteering with Axis Surf uh, that I absolutely love to do. We talk surreal and having spent my entire life as a rescuer, the rescuer got rescued.